So my name is Kyneton, the Tech Pro, and I'm going to show you how to perform uh, filtering on a table using two different methods. So any method you feel is easy for you, you can use. So let's start with this method. So let's say I type KIN and press enter key. You say it, you see it finds me. SO, you can see it finds two records that match this criteria. Well, if I type NA, so in this case, you can see it filters uh, by this last name here. So this is the first method and the second method is this. So let's say I type this one as I'm typing it is filtering. S O N A. Uh, you can see it's filtering automatically as I'm typing it. Uh, so if I take out everything, I have all my records. Uh, so, uh, so that is how this works. So I'm going to show you starting from the easy methods and we now go to the one that is not really difficult, but a bit challenging. So let's start from the easy one. The easy one is this one, where you have to press the enter key or you click on the go key. So if you just type something and press enter, or you don't type anything and press enter, you have uh, all the records already there. So let's start immediately. There are just seven types to follow. And I'd like to recommend you subscribe to my channel by hitting on that subscribe button. And if you have any challenges following my class, please let me know in the comment box. And just to let you know, this application you see here is actually a complete application I built. So the tutorial step-by-step -step on building of this application, you can find it in the description box. It's really very easy, it's fun. So you can follow this tutorial, build up this application, and then you can play around. So please subscribe to my channel. Let me know how you feel. Let me know what you think about my lessons. And please also like my video and share around with your friends. Let's get to work. So at this point, we are going to I'm actually going to close this and open the application that actually we that is under development. So I'm going to go to localhost at port 8080 at port 8080 at port 8080. So here I have the application that I'm still working on. So this is where we are going to be working. So here we don't have any first any filtering. We are going to add the feature here to filter the data, okay? So let's follow the methods. So let me go back to Spring Boots and let me uh, start uh, following the methods uh, step by step. So it's really going to be very easy. So the first thing we are going to do, the very first thing we are going to do is to add the button on top of the page. So uh, first, let me open the HTML page. Let me open the HTML page that we are going to be working on. The HTML pages in an application, in a Spring application, is inside the, the template folder. So I'm going to open the employee the HTML page. And if I scroll down to where I have the table, so the first step we are going to take says we are going to add a text box and a button to submit this text box. Okay. So there is a table, and this is the top of the table is somewhere here. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to add a, a test field that we are going to, uh, where we are going to actually be typing in uh, the criteria, okay? So let's add a test field and a button. I'm going to say input. Uh, so, so it's coming up with this intelligence. So I'm going to say input. Actually, I typed it out. So let me just copy it and paste. So let's not uh, waste time. Let me copy it from where I have it um, and I'm just going to paste it right there. So I'm going to just add a text box uh, and a form. A text, a, a text, I'm going to add a text box right here and a submit button, that's all. So I'm going to paste it because I already typed it out. So I'm going to paste it, yeah. So let me just show you what is happening by making room here. So this is a form. So inside the form, we have two items, two controls. The input called the ID is TSD search, and the name is the keyword. Make no mistake about it. Always, you have to call the name. The, key, the, 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 the name will be the key, will be keyword, and the button is going to be submit. If you remove this button, uh, well, or you can also hide this button and use the enter key to search. But for now, to keep it simple, let's leave it this way. All right, so at this point, if we rerun this application, we are going to see uh, this form. So let me rerun it while we are going to the next part. The next part says wrap the wrap the um, wrap this inside a form tag. 
okay, which I I've done. So, uh, let me just tell you that you see the 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 action th action here. He site to the URL is the same URL that displays the data on the on this table. So this is the endpoint where we have the employee data coming from. So I'm going to just show you this URL in the controller file. Meanwhile, let's just check what is happening in the browser. So at this point, if I refresh, you will see that we have the, let's just refresh this page, F5 to refresh. Why is it not showing up? So I have this, uh, so let me rerun. So don't have started a portate AD. So refresh, control, F5. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, so let me actually move this form into. Maybe I maybe I need to run the application again. I don't think I saved it. So let me rerun it again. So the next thing I'm going to do. Let me while we are waiting for it to run, I'm going to open the controller. Uh, the controller where we have the endpoints. Of course, you know that the endpoint, the URL where requests are submitted to. So I'm going to open the employee controller at this point. So this is the employee controller. This is the endpoint. Now I explained this in the tutorial where I built this application. So I'm not going to be explaining it so much, but I'm going to explain it clearly for you to understand. So at this point, if I refresh, you can see that we'll have uh, a test box and a go button. But for now, we, we click on it, uh, nothing actually happens. So the next step says uh, set the action. The action is set. So the action of the form is actually where the form is submitted. The form is submitted here. And right now, when you submit this form, it doesn't it doesn't do any filtering. It simply returns uh, the employee. Employee is a HTML page, basically employee.html. But then it also adds this list of employee. Let me just copy it and put it somewhere here. So while it returns the HTML page, it finds all the employees right here and puts it in this employee variable so that when we go to the HTML page, we can assess uh, the list of employees using employees variable. Yeah. Okay. Hope, hope you understand. If not, leave me a comment. Maybe I can clarify a little more. So whatever we place into this variable, into the attributes is going to be accessible in the HTML page. In this case, this employee now, it returns all the employees, which is employees, employee service, just get employees, returns all the employees, okay? All right, so the next step says, write a method in the repository to return employees by keyword, okay? So basically, I'm going to go to the repository and we are going to write a method to return employee by keyword. Now, this is where you need to pay attention on how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go to the repository, employee repository. So now I got, we are going to write a custom query at this point to return employee by keyword. Okay, so take note of how I write this query. I'm going to say list, uh, list of employee. And I can say find by keyword, find by keyword, and I specify the parameter, the URL parameter, because when you submit that form, that form having only one text box, it's it, this is a URL parameter. So I, I'm going to be getting the URL parameter and the name. I told you the name of the text box has to be keyword, okay? And it's going to be coming from URL parameter called keywords. And the argument or the parameter for this function is going to be string uh, keywords. All right. Okay. So let me add all the namespaces. Okay. java.util.list. That is fine. Okay. So we are not done yet. Now, uh, Spring Data JPA or Spring JPA, or JPA repository does not actually understand find by keyword. It understands find by first name, find by last name, but keyword is not part of the of the attributes of the employee, right? 
So the, the employee of data, one of the fields is not keyword. We have first name, last name, username, other name, address. So if we say find by any of these things, we can get something. But now we have find by keyword, it's not going to get it. So we are going to write something called a custom query, right? So to write a custom query to actually find by keyword, I'm going to just write it. Let me say, you use an annotation called a query annotation and just write your query like this. So I'm going to write, the value have to be select. You write your query inside this double quotes, select star, just give it a second. Okay, select star from employee, where, uh, let me just, employee E, where E, the first name, like, because we are, we are, we don't know what the user is going to type in, so it's going to, we are going to be using the like clause. Where, where E, the first name, like, and you know that in a uh, SQL like clause, you use the percentage uh, symbol to open and close, and then you are going to use the colon to open and then where it is like the key word. All right, so at this point, I'm also going to say uh, native query is equal to true. Really, I don't know why this native query is equal to true. I've tried removing it. I think it's also going to work. So what is going to happen here is when a user types in a keyword and that keyword uh, uh, is part of the first name or the first name is like that keyword is going to uh, find is going to return all employee matching that criteria okay but in this case you can see we are using just first name so let's also do the same for last name so i'm go i'm simply just going to say or use the or or uh, um, uh, operator or e the last name e the last name is equal is, is like we are going to use the like clause again is like open a uh, percentage sign twice and I'm going to say keyword as well okay hopefully I'm not making any mistake if if I'm making any mistake please correct me uh, and also if you have challenges just let me know I'm going to reach out to you and help you solve it and also subscribe if you've not subscribed because that's when I'll know you're following along so this is basically how to write an SQL query in the repository so at this point, if I go back to the service, because remember, we move from repository to service to controller. So we can just move from controller to the repository. So we are going to write exactly the same function in the, in the employee service as well. Although you can actually move from the controller to the repository, but it's, going, it's good to, to, to have uh, a service layer. That is the best practice. So I'm going to open employee service and simply write exactly the same function. So I'm going to say to the comments, get employees by keyword. And I'm going to write the same function public return list of employee find by keyword and specify string keyword. So basically, it's the same uh, function we have in our repository uh, that we have here. It's fine by keywords. Where do I have a typo? Uh, return statement. Okay. So we are going to return uh, employee repository dot find by keyword because we already wrote it. Okay. So it's going to give me there is IntelliSense, find by keyword, and this is where we go. All right. So finally, this is where you need to pay attention because in the repository now, I'm going to, in the controller, I'm going to explain to you what's going to happen. In this function, we are now going to be checking if the keyword is assigned. If the keyword is assigned, then we are going to find by keyword. If the keyword is not assigned, then we simply return all the employees. Is as simple as that. So what I'm going to be saying at this point, I'm going to be saying if, uh, so before I continue, I'll just put that we also have the second parameter here, string, keyword, keyword. Okay, 
So we're going to be checking if this keyword is assigned because this keyword is expected to be coming from the URL uh, parameter where this request is made from. So I'm going to be saying if the keyword uh, is not null, is not null, if the keyword is not null, then we are going to uh, we are going to return by keyword. I'm going to say model dot add attributes and just a, a, basically the same thing you already have there. Employees and employee service dot find by keyword and we have the keyword and that is fine. So if the keyword is not null, why do we have this error? Dot add attributes. So it's going to be add attribute, not add attributes or add all attributes. So I'm going to save. All right. So if the keyword is not null, meaning that the keyword is assigned or someone typed in something into the keyword uh, uh, site box, then we also we now get uh, find by keyword. Else, uh, simply return everything. So else we are going to return everything. Else we are going to simply return everything. So else the keyword is not assigned. Just do just do get employees and get employees is going to return all the employees. Okay, I'm going to save and um, hopefully it's going to be fine. Let's go ahead to test it to see how it works. Um, so let's go back to rerun the application again. I'm going to just restart this application and let's test it out. Again, if you want to follow the complete tutorial for building this application, I told you, I'll find the link in the description box. This is a very nice application, built very easily and simple to follow. Uh, this is me, it has a very funny smile. Okay, so let's test out what we've done. Hopefully everything uh, worked fine. Let's see. So we have that Tomcat started on port 88, you can see. So let me go here and refresh this page first. And at this point, let's enter something, uh, enter KIN. And you can see it found by keyword. And let's enter, uh, okay, it's also found by keyword NA. So uh, O L E, so O L E found Oleander and so on and so forth. So you can see that it deletes uh, after you search, it finds and it deletes what is there. So we are going to solve this later on. So this is the first method. It's very easy. It's the easy one. So I hope you're going to follow it and also let me know how you feel. The second method I mentioned, which I'm going to continue with it. And the next tutorial is this one. I also told you is this one which uh, is actually filtering automatically. Okay, it tells me to log in. So this is a complete application. So if I enter KIN, K, uh, KIN or whatever, or Lawrence, Lawrence, it finds Lawrence. But take note that in this case now, it's removing all of our, um, uh, all the navigation bars, it takes them out, and also the nice pictures of employees. The thumbnails here has been removed. We are going to be talking about this later. It's a bit challenging, but I'm going to break it down to you uh, very easily. And I'm going to be stopping here. Feel free to subscribe and also let me know how you feel about my lessons. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.